You still be this example. Let's just Praise God. Thank God for another Friday Bible study at noon. We're going to continue on the series, Living a Life That Honors Christ. Living a Life That Gives Honor to Christ. Only when we operate from the kingdom of God will we be able to truly honor Christ the way he is asking us to. Now, my scripture, background scripture, Matthew 9, 37 and 38 says... Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth labors into his harvest. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against us authority. He gave them authority against unclean spirits to catch them out. And to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And truly, when we operate from this kingdom authority and begin to cast out demons, heal the sick, their districts will truly bring glory to God when we operate from the kingdom of God. He will truly get the honor out of our life. Now, before mankind was cut off spiritually from God, they never understood our walk in the dominion part of their creation. That's Adam and Eve. It was God's original intent for mankind to have dominion in the earth. So it was God's plan all along for mankind, for mankind to have dominion in the earth. But guess what? They messed up. And so let's look at that. So it was God's intentions, and it's still God's intention for mankind, the born-again believers, to have the authority to dominate in the earth even today. In other words, to operate from the kingdom of God. That is what that is God's intention. He says, and God said, Let us make man in our image. See, after our likeness. And let them have dominion. That is the first thing he said. I will make them after, my, after our image so they can have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And then after he created us in his image, God blessed them and God said unto them, Now I want you to be fruitful and I want you to multiply and I want you to replenish the earth and to do it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So God said, I'm going to create you in my image. I want you to be fruitful. I want you to replenish the earth. And I want you to have dominion over everything. So we left man in charge. And so Psalms 8, 4 through 6, another scripture says, uh, so he, so because now, since he left us in charge, made us in our image, then told us what to do. He wanted us to operate from that kingdom. And then he says, Psalms 8, 4, and 6, 
4 through 6, rather. What is man? That thou art mindful of him. Why are you so mindful of man? Why are you thinking about man? And the son of man that thou visit him. For thou hast made him. Here again. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. And this word from our teaching means God. We have God has made us a little lower than him. And has crowned him with glory and honor. See, he crowned us with that honor so we could bring, live a life that honors him. He crowned us with that honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion. You're again, dominion. Over the works of thy hands, thou hast put all things under his feet. In other words, God left man in charge to do what? To reign in life, to operate from the kingdom of God. Now, it was always God's plan to, for man to live like this. This is not an afterthought. He didn't just say, oh, I forgot. Oh, this is what I want man to do. No, no, no. God has, it was always in God's man, mind for man to live like this. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you. God said, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So God said, this is not an afterthought. I always had plans for you. He told Jeremiah, he said, before you even enter into your mother's womb, I had plans for you. I sanctified you and I had ordained you and called you a prophet. He was talking about, he had uh, problems speaking and, and he didn't want to, he was in fear. But God said, my plan is for you to be a prophet. My plan is for you to go into the nation. So he didn't think, oh, oh. He was thinking, God, you called me, and I got to start a year because God said, I'm going to do my work through you. But the thing is, God always had plan for Jeremiah, not only Jeremiah, but for the people of God, once you get born again, is to rule and reign in life and operate from that kingdom. And like I said, when you operate from that kingdom, you're bringing glory and honor to God. Now, remember I said God made us to have dominion. The word dominion in the old covenant is, uh, is equivalent to uh, the word kingdom in the new covenant. So the word dominion is equivalent to kingdom in the uh the word kingdom in the new covenant so he still said oh i want you to dominate i want you to have dominion but it's but he's using the word kingdom now so it's a, a dominion is synonymous with the kingdom so the dominion means to rule to prevail against and to reign so god created us to rule he created us to prevail and he created us to uh, prevail against, okay? To, to pre prevail against and reign. Reign means to rule. Now, also the word subdue means to tread down, to conquer, to subjugate, to bring into subjection. So God said, I also created you to subdue what? To bring what under, which means to bring under control. And so you say, bring what under control? Well, your marriage your finances, your body, your mind, your children, anything that's under your control, he expects for you to be on top of it and not let it be out, uh, out of control and out from your reach. He wants you to bring it in control. Everything that you have, you're in authority. You're in control. Now, the word of God is the authority of God. This is very important. The word of God is the authority of God. The Holy Spirit is the ability of God. So not only do we have authority, but we have ability. They are designed to complement each other. They're not the same, but they're one in the same. And so, but you need both of them in order for them to complement each other. You know, and so what I mean is they to complete complete you can't do anything without authority and you can't do if you have authority and you can't if you don't have ability you can't do anything without ability so you need both of them you need the authority and you need the ability in the kingdom of God so some people they are trying to get the Holy Spirit to do something without any authority from the word and that's not going to work. Unless you speak the word of God the Holy Spirit can do nothing but Hoover 
And who will me to be suspended in the air or to remain in one place? So even though the Holy Spirit is the ability of God and you have the word of God, unless you speak it, then the Holy Spirit has nothing to manifest in your life. Nothing. It just remains in one spot. And here's an example of that in Genesis 1, uh, 2 and 3. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. See, until God spoke, even though we had the ability and the Holy Spirit was there to Hoover, um, until it did nothing didn't happen until he spoke the word of God. And when he spoke the word of God, then he was able to bring light. So I said, even though we got the authority, even though we have the ability, unless we speak, nothing is going to happen in our life. You can, it can be confusion all around you. And you say, why is all this confusion? See, you have the authority to stop the core of the confusion. But if you you don't speak peace in the situation, then confusion is going to reign, and it's not. And you can't. And you need to speak peace and bring that situation under your control. So you see, people have authority, but they don't. And, and you and they have the ability, but unless you say something, then nothing is going to happen uh, in your life. Now, Luke one and twenty six through thirty one, which is very interesting, it said, and in the sixth month. The angel of Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. This is the very specific. The angel name was Gabriel. It see, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. You see, he's very specific of the house of David. And the virgin name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his sin, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. So God said, you're going to conceive in your womb. The word of God is going to be, the word of God is the seed. The seed was flat in her Womb. But let's see the ability of God with what's happening. The seed is the word of God. The word that was planted, they had their authority. They put the word in her womb. And let's see what happened. Until you speak over that word, then nothing is going to happen. Now the 24th through the 35th verse said, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel Gabriel answered and said unto her, This is how gonna this is how this is gonna manifest. It say the Holy Ghost, that's the ability of God. The ability of God shall fall, come upon thee. That means it's going to fall upon you. And the power of the highest, that's that ability of God, shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, talking about the word of God, which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. So you see the word was placed in her, but the ability of God, which would cause that thing to manifest in her womb, and, 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 and which was Jesus. And we know that because John 1 and 14 say, and the word, talking about the word, which was Jesus, and the word was made flesh and the world among us, and we beheld his glory. Glory means the manifested presence, the manifested presence of God. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So they said we beheld the, his glory. We beheld the manifested presence of Jesus. And Jesus was the word of God made plain for others to see. Amen. Now Jeremiah 1 and 12 says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. So God is going to confirm his word. And so if you don't speak the word of God, he has nothing to confirm in your life. You have to speak the word of God. 
and he will confirm it in your life. You say, well, nothing has been confirmed in my life, but then you need to check yourself and see what have you been speaking. What have you been speaking? Because if you haven't been speaking anything, if you have been speaking the word of God, he has nothing to confirm in your life. Now, Mark 16, 73 through 20, and these signs will follow those who believe. See, God said these signs are going to follow them who believe. Okay? It say, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. That's new languages. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick. And they will recover. See, that's a process. When we act on the word of God, which is if we have the authority to act on the word of God, and then the Holy Spirit will do the work. It will bring it to manifestation. It says, and they went out and preached everywhere. See? We're acting in God's stead. He left us in God's stead. And they went out and they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and doing what? Confirming the word. So God wants to confirm his word in your life. He said, with signs follow. So if you speak the word of God, which is the authority of God, then he said he'll confirm it. You know, when you speak it, and that's another form of operating from that kingdom, operating from the kingdom of God. And so that's good. Okay, so now we were sold into slavery. You say, well, what's happening? Where we at now? Well, nothing is happening now. Well, we're going to get to that point. They say, we were sold into slavery. You say, well, who sold us into slavery? Adam. Satan usurped our authority, and we begin to live a sinful lifestyle. Because remember I said earlier, God made us to have dominion and to rule and to reign in life. So what happened? Satan came in and usurped that authority that God had gave to man, and we begin to live a sinful lifestyle of sickness and disease and poverty, lack or whatever, you name it. The word usurp means to seize, to take the place of. So he took the place of our authority. Man had authority of on the earth. Then Satan came and tricked man out of his authority. And so then as a result of tricking man out of his authority, then we began to operate from his kingdom of sickness, disease, and poverty. But Luke 19 and 10 says, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Well, you say, well, what was lost? Everything was lost. There were, uh, our dominion, our authority, our healing, our prosperity, everything was lost. But Jesus came to redeem, to redeem man, to give man back his place that we had with him in the garden. Now, let's go to uh, Ezekiel 28, and let's look at this, what happened. This is very interesting how it started. You Satan ended up tricking Adam out of his authority, but that's... But let's see where he come from. Ezekiel, let's see where uh, Satan came from. Ezekiel 28 and 11 through 15 says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man. See, this is the talking to, this is a type of Satan. And this is the word of God, the Ezekiel coming. He's talking about Satan. He's the, which his name was Lucifer at the time. He said, More of the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man. Take up a lamentation for the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thou thus says the Lord God, talking about Lucifer. He said, You were the seal of perfection, and he was, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. I mean, he was a beautiful creature. You were in the Eden, the garden of God. Yes, he was, because he was in there uh, talking to Eden and getting her to go against God and uh, with what God had told her. So he was in there. It said, you were in the go Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sorters, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the turquoise, and emerald with gold. Okay. The workmanship of your tempers and pipe. That means he was a, a, a anointed singer and he knew how to play music. And uh, he was uh, 
uh, he could sing and do everything. He was over the choir. He he was it say was prepared for you on the day you were created. And he said you were the anointed cherub. He was an anointed angel who covers. I establish you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You were up there with God. And then he said, you walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created. So God said, I created you and you were perfect. Well, then what happened? And then let's go to the 17 and 18 verse. He said, Yo, you know what happened? He said, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. So because of your beauty, you got lifted up. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before the kings that they might gaze at you. Okay? It says, uh, you defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst, and it devoured you. So what happened? God said, I created you, but you, until you was lifted up in pride. And so when he got lifted up in pride, God said, I'm going to bring you down. And so God got rid of him. And so now he's got down. He came down to the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve was. And he came in there, and he started deceiving and deceived Eve out of her authority that God gave her. And so Satan lost his authority and was replaced by Adam and Eve. Isn't this something? And then Adam and Eve lost their authority. Let's go to uh, Genesis 3, 1 through 8. And so this, it is very important that we keep this, uh, keep following this and see where this is now. It says 3, 1 and 8. Let's read that. Now the serpent was more so cunning. He was a cunning, that devil is cunning, than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? See, he's asking her this. He knew what God had said, but he's very cunning. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. God didn't say nothing about touching it. He just said don't eat of it. You know, and so she's engaged in this conversation with the enemy. Then the shepherd said to the woman, you will not surely die. See, he's a liar. Anytime God tell you to do something in his word, he did somebody come to you and tell you, contrary to the word of God, you need to know that they're lying. Then the shepherd said to the woman, you will not surely die, but God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Knowing good and evil. See, he lied. He's a liar. And so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desired to make one wise, she took out the fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her to eat. So they did something that God had commanded them not to do. And so that's how they lost authority. So anytime you don't do what God asks you to do, then you lose your authority. You lose your dominion in the earth. But I want to go on because I made a comment. I said that we were sold into slavery. We were sold into sin. And, and Adam did that. So if you go to Romans 7 and 14... It said, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Remember I said we were sold under sin? We were sold into sin. This word soul means transfer of property. Transfer of property. When they obeyed the voice of Satan, they were transferred from the kingdom of God over into the kingdom of Satan. That's how, they, that's how we got over there. Where he became their Lord and their spiritual head. So when they disobeyed God, they were sold. Means transferred into the kingdom of darkness. Now let's read Genesis 2, 16 and 17. It says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day that you shall eat of it, you shall surely die. So how did they die? They died spiritually. In other words, they was disconnected from God. So now Satan, when you get disconnected from God, now Satan is going to train them 
in his kingdom of negativity and hate and sickness and disease and poverty and toiling and pain. Toiling. It was never meant for man to toil and just toil for a living. He was to, it was given to him to plant the seed and make a living from his seed. And so they went from being head over the earth until being captive, until being prisoners, until being slaves, until being dominated in their own house. That's the Garden of Eden that God gave them authority to rule over. And so I tell them about that to the earth. The Bible say, the uh, Psalms 115 and 16 say that the heavens, uh, uh, even the heavens, uh, all the Lord's, but the earth has he given unto the children of men. And see, the earth is like our domain. Uh, even though Satan is the God of this world, but the space that you occupy, the, the, uh, where you lord it over, he has no, uh, he, he has no business ruling over your space. He has no business occupying you. He said the earth has he given uh, until the children of men. So while we're here on the earth, we're supposed to be ruling and reigning in life. So he has no authority to come and dominate us. Now Ecclesiastes 10 and 7 says, I have seen servants. Oh, Lord, I have seen servants on horses while princes walk on the ground like servants. This is how he got the body of Christ. This is he got the children of God, some of us, not all of us. He said, I have seen servants on horses while princes walk on the ground like servants. So it's like the slaves or the servants are up on the house. It's like the children, the, the Satan's children got all the good stuff, and it's the People of God, some of them, not all of them, that's on the ground walking like servants or acting like servants because they don't, they're not operating from that kingdom. So anytime you don't operate from that kingdom, then you begin to and start functioning out of Satan kingdom. So he said he the one riding up on the horse. He the one uh, having all the things, good things happen to him. And the children of God are down here. Is just, That's not what God wanted his children to be down here in poverty in lack, in sickness, in this disease. God wants us to operate from that kingdom and live in prosperity, live in health, live in wholeness. And so uh and so we got to reverse things and turn that thing and turn it around when it comes. Because it's Satan is still deceiving too many Christians. He's still deceiving too many Christians out of their birthright. He's still uh, having them because of a lack of knowledge. See, when you don't know what belongs to you, when you don't know that you've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God, then you'll continue to operate from that kingdom of darkness, from that kingdom of lack, from that uh, 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 a kingdom of sickness and disease. But God because uh, you don't, you won't, you, either you don't know or when you fail to act. But God gets the glory. We're talking about a lifestyle of honest Christ. When we operate from the kingdom of God, then, then we can uh, have a lifestyle that honors Christ. But when we're functioning at any point in the kingdom of daughter, then God can't get the glory and he can't get a lifestyle that honors him. Now, Jesus, remember I said he was sold out to Satan? Now, Jesus did redeem us back. Now, Jesus, through his supernatural birth as a man, brought God's government back into the earth so we could share in it. So God brought it back into the earth so we could share in it. Now, what I mean by government is a government is an empire. And it comes from the root word sarah, which means to prevail, to be prince with God. So in Isaiah 9 and 2, 4 and 6, explains that. It says the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Well, that's us. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. For guess what? For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder and the rod of his oppressor. Well, that was Satan. God said, I've broken the yoke 
of, of his burden. I'm in the rod of his oppressor. And God said, I lifted that burden up off of you. But that is the reason why Jesus came and God made Jesus visible to undo, to destroy, to loosen, to dissolve the works of the devil. And so that's been done. So God said this in this government, this is what Jesus would do and he has done that. Now, Ephesians 2, 4, 6 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened, quickened us. That word quicken me made us alive together with Christ, and by grace you are saved, and has raised us up. See, we've been raised up together with Christ. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now raised up means position wise we've been raised up with Christ. So we are far above principality, far above the powers and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world but that which is to come. So Christ has raised us far above everything that could destroy us. We're seated position wise in him. So he has destroyed everything that could destroy us so we could live a life and bring honor and glory to him. Now, 1 John 4 and 17 says, Herein is our love made perfect, our mature, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. God said, not when we get to heaven, he said, right now, we're like that. Right now, we can live out of that kingdom. Right now, we're all that Jesus said that we are. And we are just like Jesus right now in this world. You are victorious now. You are a winner now. You are healed now. You are delivered now. You are set free now. You are the head Today, right now, because if you're living out of that kingdom, and when you only when you live out of that kingdom, you will be able to bring glory and honor to God. So, because God said, uh, what is that scripture that he brought? He put us into the seek ye first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things, and all these things shall be added unto you. So he told us to seek the kingdom. See, we're in the kingdom, but you need to know how to fun how to function in the kingdom. And you're gonna only know that when you get into the word of God. Now John 17 and 16 say, They are not they are not of the world. See, we're in the world, but we're not of this world system. We don't function the way the world does. It says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We're not in the kingdom of darkness. We're not supposed to be functioning in the kingdom of darkness, but we're supposed to be functioning in the kingdom of God in this world. Now, we're supposed to be functioning in the kingdom of righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is the scepter of the kingdom of God. Meaning, a scepter is the rod of the emblem that the king used. In other words, you could not go before the king. You could not come into the king's presence without him giving you permission. If you try to go into the king's presence without permission, then you would end up dead. And so now we could not come into God's presence without being righteous. He had to deal with our sins because he cannot fellowship with sin. So, Hebrews 1 and 8 said, But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. So we're in the kingdom of God, and we got in there through righteousness. And how did that happen? 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says, For me, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So, God, we were made righteous. We were born righteous. He took everything that we were so we can become everything that he is. So now we can come into the presence of God. We have permission to come boldly unto the presence of God. In fact, Hebrews 4, 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may find help 
in grace in time of need. And so we say that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we can come boldly into God's presence because we are righteous. We are the righteousness of God. So begin to operate from that kingdom if you want a lifestyle that honors Christ. And you can't operate from that kingdom because you are the righteousness of God in him. May God bless you living a life that honors Christ. God bless you, and I'll see you next week.